Wild Weather Hurricanes by Lorraine Jean Hopping. Chapter 3. A Hurricane is Born. In the Atlantic Ocean, hurricane season is from June to November. Storm tracking begins even before a hurricane is a hurricane. The giant storms start out at sea as weaker areas of circling winds. These winds are called tropical depressions. The winds spin slowly and are spread out over a wide area. Storm trackers meet these first spinning winds head on. They measure the temperature of these winds both inside and out. The warmer the center of the storm, the stronger it is. Storm trackers take other readings as well. They look closely at the eye. It may be tiny, tight, and as round as a donut hole. If so, watch out. This means the winds may spin into a tropical storm. This happens one out of ten times. The other nine times the spinning winds die out. Thunderstorm, tropical storm, trade winds, low pressure wave. A tropical storm is like a hurricane, only weaker. The winds blow up to 73 miles per hour. In the Atlantic Ocean, a tropical storm usually heads from east to west toward the United States. Storm trackers watch this kind of storm carefully. North America, Atlantic Ocean, Caribbean, Pacific Ocean. Just as a car needs fuel to keep running, so does a tropical storm. Its fuel isn't gas, though. It is the warm, wet air that rises from the sea. The water temperature must be above 81 degrees Fahrenheit. If the water temperature is below 81 degrees Fahrenheit, the storm runs out of energy and dies. If it is above 81 degrees Fahrenheit, the winds spin faster. They form a tighter and tighter circle. The storm grows stronger. If the winds reach 74 miles per hour, a hurricane is born. The Weather Service gives it a hurricane name, such as Allison or Barry. A name that starts with A means it is the first hurricane of the season. A B name is for the second hurricane, and so on. I... 81 degrees Fahrenheit plus water. Chapter 4 Zigzag Storms. Hurricanes do not all follow the same route. There is no hurricane highway in the sky. These storms zig, zag, and even turn around and go the other way. The biggest faker I can remember was Hurricane Elena in 1845 and 1985, West Bennett said. It was supposed to hit my area, Biloxi, Mississippi, but then it hung a right and moved toward Florida. People in Biloxi thought they were off the hook, then Elena turned back to the west. It hit Biloxi. Tropical Depression, Tropical Storm, Hurricane, Tropical... Depression storm is on its way out. These zigs and zags make a hurricane's path hard to predict, but experts do have a few guidelines to follow. Hurricanes can last 10 days before they run out of energy or warm, moist air. They die out quickly over a cold sea. Hurricanes never form on the equator and they never cross it. Hurricanes are slow. They travel about 15 miles per hour over water. Bicycles can go faster than that. Hurricanes usually slow down when they hit land, especially mountains. Hurricanes may be slow, but their winds spin very, very fast. Imagine a street cleaning machine. The brushes scrub in fast circles like the hurricane winds. But the machine itself, like the storm, moves slowly down the street. Every 12 to 24 hours, storm trackers fly through those winds to collect data. Their data ends up in computers at the National Hurricane Center in Florida. The scientists at the center use their computers to carefully watch the progress of the storm. 
the scientists also collect data from other sources. One source is weather satellite. National Hurricane Center. Chapter 5, Sky High Views. Since the 1960s, satellites have watched hurricanes from space. But satellites can't give us all of the data we need. For example, in 1969, a satellite spotted Hurricane Camille in the Gulf of Mexico. The storm looked small from space. People didn't think much of it. Storm trackers found out otherwise. Unlike satellites, their view wasn't sky high. They saw Hurricane Camille from the inside. Yes, Camille was small, but the eye was tiny and round. It had no holes or gaps in the sides. That meant Camille had a lot of power. Its winds hit 180 miles per hour, the fastest possible speed for a hurricane. People were warned. They left their homes. Whole towns were cleared out. Camille ruined 75,000 homes. More than 250 people died in the storm. Many more people would have died if they had not fled. The lesson was that satellites alone cannot track hurricanes. They can't see how fast the winds spin or exactly where the eye is. Only storm trackers can do that. Better tracking has reduced the hurricane death toll in the Western Hemisphere. Countries with poor warning systems are not so lucky. Bangladesh is next to the Indian Ocean in Asia. About 300,000 people died there in a cyclone in 1970. Hurricanes are called cyclones in the Indian Ocean. It was the deadliest storm on record. In 1991, another storm killed about 100,000 people in Bangladesh. One year later, in 1992, Hurricane Andrew struck the United States. This powerful storm hit Florida and Louisiana. It was the most expensive storm on record. Andrew destroyed $10 billion worth of property, yet only 52 people died. Andrew proved that tracking storms can't save property, but it can save lives. And that's why storm trackers stay on the job. After a 12-hour flight, I'm dog tired. West Bennett said, I go home and turn on the TV. The weather report says, aircraft have pinpointed the location of the storm. It tells people to clear out. I think, that's me. I did that. I saved lives. Hurricane safety tips. Check that flashlights and radios are always in good working condition. Always have a stock of fresh drinking water, canned food, and warm blankets on hand. If a hurricane is approaching, keep calm and stay with your family. Listen to the radio or watch the TV for storm conditions and evacuation information. When officials tell your family to clear out, do it. The end.